All right, guys, next three phase calculation. Again, this source right here is the secondary of a transformer. We have no idea what the primary is. We're not concerned with that whatsoever. And let's start with the voltage. So I've given you guys a voltage here of 240 volts. It looks like I've given a resistance on the phase on our load here, our three phase resistive delta load of 41.6 ohms. So let's start with this voltage. Is it the, the phase voltage or is it the line voltage? Well, we've got to look at whether it's inside the circuit or outside of the circuit. It looks like it's looking at the voltage from here at the star point to an external connection there. So that's on the inside of the Y. So that one's going to be a phase value. Okay, so if we have 240 on the phase, uh, let's, let's stop for a second and write down the, the rules for both the Y and delta before we go forwards. So here we know that on the Y, our V line is equal to our V phase times root 3 and we know for the currents that I line is equal to I phase. Over here we've got the delta circuit. On the delta circuit it's more of a parallel circuit so our voltages are the same but our currents are a little bit messed up by root 3 so our I line is equal to our I phase times root 3. Okay, so now we've got our rules that we can go forwards with. Uh, we can see that the line voltage, the line voltage would be from here to here. And that line voltage is obviously greater than our phase voltage, and it's greater by uh, root 3. So we're going to take our phase voltage of 240 volts. We're going to multiply that by root 3. And we already know that number, but let's just double check with the calculator just to make sure. So we got 240 times the square root of 3 gives us 415.69. I'm going to round that up to 416 just so we have standard voltages going through. Okay, so we've got 416 volts and that's our line voltage outside of the circuit. Beautiful. Okay, that line voltage comes over here and gets impressed right here and right here across our delta resistive load and so our line voltage here is 416 volts line uh, we were given this one beautiful and then last thing we need to do is find our phase voltage well this is our line voltage from here to here at 416 and we can see that that's an identical voltage on the phase so on the inside here, this voltage right here on the phase is 416 volts across that resistor. Beautiful. Next step is we're going to take our three phase circuit. We're going to break it down into an Ohm's law single phase equation. And right here across this resistor, we've got, let's see, 416 volts impressed across 41.6 ohms of resistance and obviously I mean that's totally intuitive but let's just double check just to make sure everybody's cool 416 divided by 41.6 gives us 10 so we've got 10 amps on the inside of that uh, delta there okay so let's drop this away we were doing our currents in red so let's keep going with that so that gives us 10 amps and that's on the phase meaning that that current is right here on the inside of the delta. So again, our phase value right here was 416 volts divided by our 41.6 ohms. That gave us 10 amps on the phase. Okay, so there's 10 amps here, and there's 10 amps here, and there's 10 amps here. It's all a balanced load right now. On the outside, though, our line current is going to be greater. So our line current here is going to be equal to our phase current of 10 amps. We're going to multiply our phase current by root 3. Okay, so our line current here is 10 amps multiplied by root 3. Right, we know what that one is as well, but let's just double check so everybody's cool on how to put it in the calculator. 10 amps times the square root of 3 gives me 17.32 amps. Excellent. Okay, so our line current here is 17.32 amps. And we can see that that current is coming from right here. 
So our line current here is going to move over. We've got 17.32 because at this point we're just keeping things nice and simple with one source and one load. Okay, and on the Y circuit we can see that the current just has one path to go out from that transformer's winding. So on the inside, our phase current is also going to be 17.32 amps. So I phase is equal to I line for a Y is 17.32 amps on the inside. So each of these windings right here are responsible for 17.32. They come over here, that 17.32 comes in, and each of these loads are drawing 10 amps each. Just 120 degrees out of phase. Okay, then we're going to keep going. And what we've done so far in the previous videos was uh, with this value right here, we've been using the line value. And then we've been confirming with our phase values over here to see that these two are equal. So we'll start off with our line values. In this case, we've got 416 volts on the line. Our line current is 17.32 amps. And because we're using our line values, we're going to multiply by root 3. <clears throat> So what do we got? We got 416 times our 17.32 times the square root of 3. That gives us 12,479.63. And again, that's in watts because all we have are resistors there. Okay, let's take our phase values here and double check that this value is basically identical to this value. Here we're going to take our phase voltage, so 240 volts on the phase. We're going to take our phase current of 17.32. And because we're looking at the phase values, we're going to multiply it by 3 phase. Okay, just double checking here. 240 times the 17.32 times 3 phase gives us 12470.4 and we'll put VA for that value but essentially the VA and the wattage are identical now looking at these two values like hang on Pete those two values are quite a ways off we got 12470 here we got 12479 here but remember that here we're using the 240 volts and over here we're using the 416 Right? Remember that this value right here was actually 415.6, but I rounded up to the standard voltage of 416. In doing so, I created an error between these two values right here. But essentially, these are roughly the same. All right, guys? Looks good. We'll move on to the next one. So the next one will be, again, back to a delta to delta. We've looked at all the different uh, configurations of three phase. Uh, so we'll take a step back and we'll start again from the beginning. We'll go delta to delta, delta to y, y to delta, and y to y. So we'll look at all the configurations. Uh, I find with math, it's a, a key to find the patterns. And once you find the patterns and understood the equations, then it's a matter of going back and just rehashing uh, each of the examples. So just repetition after repetition and getting those y and delta configurations and their appropriate equations in your head. All right, guys, thanks for your patience. We'll see you in the next video.